whatever. Okay, I can skip all of that. I think that, okay, I'm not gonna say any of that. That doesn't matter. What's up, you guys? It's your girl, India Simone. Welcome back to my channel where I focus on all things lifestyle, wellness, and real estate related. So today I wanna talk about something that is kind of real estate related, but mostly mental health and wellness related, and that is tools and habits to overcome challenges. So I'm not gonna lie, this year has been super challenging for me. I'm going to do a deeper dive into that in another video to discuss you know, exactly what failures and challenges I experienced this year with real estate. For this video, I just really wanna focus on tips and tools that have been in my life over the past few years, but were especially important to me this year. And I really believe that these tools and habits that I incorporate in my life have really made a difference and have allowed me to shift my energy from feeling negative to positive. And these aren't habits and tools that you just develop overnight. These are still ones that I'm constantly perfecting and working on. And I think that it's always probably gonna be that way. But I can say that these tools have really helped me when it comes to combating my anxiety and my feelings of overwhelmness. But my feelings of inviting overwhelmness this year and that I'm especially grateful for. So the first tool that I use is meditation. So meditation has been very crucial for me and no, I don't meditate every day even though I encourage and strive to meditate daily at least for 10 to 15 minutes a day. I The reality is that I don't. I do try to meditate or at least sit in silence for three to four days a week. An app that really helps me to not only track my, the days that I am meditating, but also has different tools, um, different meditative exercises, whether that be guided meditations or simply music, chants, bells, you name it, is on that app. And you can access most of these things for free. It's also a, oh, collective community which is nice so you can use whatever the app has but you can also use the app in tandem with another app that you like or another meditation that you found on like youtube or soundcloud which i do sometimes and so then it will allow you to set presets for the same time duration so that you can still keep track so the second thing that i recommend is visualization and journaling so i put these two together because i think that visualization can be a method of journaling and that is one that i use i do like to make lists of how i want things to feel because i think that it's so easy for us to get so consumed with the outcome of things our goals and our expectations that even if we were to get what we wanted it wouldn't be exactly what we wanted because we don't feel like it's something that we want if that makes sense that is something that I really like to do. And another journaling method that I really resonate with is brain dumping. And I use brain dumping a lot when I am going through something. When I just feel overwhelmed, when I just have so many things going on in my brain that I just can't get a grasp on. And I just literally dump everything that's going on and whatever comes up in my, in my head. I don't edit it, I don't edit what i'm saying to myself i just let it flow and it's something that can just help you to release like the negative thoughts that you're feeling or just to feel like oh, i just just to feel more at ease and you can read back on it and just kind of figure out where your brain was and how you can tackle the things that you need to tackle it's just very very nice to Use that tool and so I really recommend it. The third tool I recommend is reading. Now, not all of us are able to read every single day. I prefer to read in the mornings when I wake up. After I meditate, I read for at least 30 minutes. And I also listen to Audibles. Now, you don't have to download the Audible app. It, you know, you don't have to pay. You can also use your local library. Most local libraries do have a system that's sort of like Audible where you can rent a book and you can read it via your phone. And I like to do this when I'm driving. Um, it really just helps me, especially self-help books, to gain clarity on things, to develop other tools into my life, or to just shift my perspective. A book that I'm reading right now that has been great for me and I just love everything that she writes is Gabrielle Bernstein's The Universe Has Your Back. 
I think that I really resonate with her because she ties in stories and experiences that she's had that have shaped who she is now and it's also like okay like this person went through rough times it can be a reminder that like okay this person went through rough times and they overcame it and so i think that books like that can really shift your perspective into just thinking more positively about your life other books that have helped me not only in a spiritual manner, but also motivate me are books like 10X by Grant Cardone. You are a badass. I love that whole entire series. So you are a badass, you're a badass at making money. She has a few others that I haven't tapped into yet, but those two especially. I like any book by Oprah, uh, if I'm quite honest. Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. Any, really anything by Deepak Chopra. The Secret, that was a big one for me when I was first learning about spirituality and how to connect that into my life. Girl Boss was a great one, is still a great one. And I recently read The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer, which is also a great one. These are books that I read, you know, over and over again um, that I look back and look at the highlights to see what resonates and what exactly it is that I need to know today. I enjoy doing that a lot. The fourth tool that I use is listening to podcasts. Now I have my podcasts for both entertainment and just to get a laugh and the ones that I use for education. Some entertainment ones that I really love are The Read, Getting Grown, Jaden XD, Two Judgy Girls, Everything Danny Pellegrino, and my very own podcast with my friend Ruby, which is called Pop of Color. Yes, this is a shameless plug. I don't care. But Pop of Color is a podcast hosted by two women of color discussing all things Bravo reality TV and ranting about nothing. I think that it's really funny. I've gotten really, or we've gotten really good feedback about it. And so if you are just looking for a laugh, if you're into Bravo TV shows, I really encourage you to check it out. So I listen to educational ones that have to do with many different subjects, some real estate, some mental health, some finance, some finance and like investment ones that I really like are ones like Brown Ambition, Earn Your Leisure. Some mental health ones that I really like are ones like Therapy for Black Girls, is your aura on straight the friend zone ones that i like real estate related are a state of mind bigger pockets and then some ones that i like that are more in the spiritual realm are on purpose super soul sundays with oprah because i am an oprah stan and school of greatness and blessed and bossed up so the sixth thing that i have is something that i'm also working on and that is exercise so the thing, why I mentioned exercise as a habit and a tool that I really encourage you to use is because I know how exercise makes me feel. I know that every single time that I exercise, I feel great. I feel disciplined. It really gets me going and keeps me motivated. However, there are just some days that are just a struggle to get out there and actually put my sneakers on and do it. And so I've really encouraged myself over the past few months to work out at least three or four times a week. There are some weeks where I don't work at all, honestly, but I get back on track and the next week always do better. And it can really help you to take that discipline of exercising and incorporate that into other aspects of your life. So a way of exercising that I thought was all hype is the Peloton. And yeah, when I first saw the commercial for the Peloton, I was like, this is, overhyped this is they are exaggerating like okay whatever you know you just think of it as any commercial but when i tell you that peloton has been so instrumental in my life like it has kept me motivated it has encouraged me it has built my strength it has taught me that i am stronger than i thought that i was and those instructors know what they're doing and i really value that system of working out. And so every time I step on that Peloton, I always feel better afterwards. And so if you are able to get on a Peloton, whether that be one at your local gym, at the gym at your apartment, or able to afford one, I really encourage it. Number seven is prayer. For me, prayer is instrumental because I have learned that there is no right and wrong way for me to talk to God. There are days where I feel overwhelmed. There are days where I am anxious. There are days when I am just feeling disappointed about something that I thought was gonna work out. There are days where I feel grateful. There are days that I feel blessed. And on 
all of those days, any occasion, I pray. It's important to for me to pray not only on the days where I'm feeling bad and I need something from God, but also on the days where I'm feeling good and just want to express my gratitude and gratefulness for where I'm at and for whatever has happened in my life. And so yeah, that's today's video. I wanted to keep it pretty short and simple today. If you have any other habits or tools or resonate with any of the tools that I've mentioned, please comment below. If you're in real estate, whether that be first starting out or very seasoned and experienced, I like to hear your comments below on how you have able to combat the feelings of disappointment and failures and how you just overcome that um, those feelings. As always, also don't forget to like and subscribe to this video so that you can see more of my content and I will catch you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.